Hello everyone and welcome to another STAT 437 lecture video. So in today's lecture, what we're going to be doing is talking about variance testing in the linear mixed effects models. Okay, so last lecture we talked about the theory, the mathematical derivations of all of these models, and the one before that we discussed sort of the conceptual understanding of linear mixed effects models. So hopefully you're getting quite familiar with these models at this point, but there's one sort of tricky bit uh, that we haven't really discussed yet, and it hasn't come up anywhere else in this course. And that's this idea of testing the variance using a likelihood ratio test when the parameter space is constrained. Okay, so it's going to be something that we need to watch out for in this models, or in these models, because we're quite interested in testing variance parameters, because there's sort of a meaningful question to be asked there. But we have to be careful because the asymptotic distribution is not going to behave the way that we're used to things behaving when we use likelihood theory. So I'm going to jump right into this and we're going to sort of just walk through what this is. We're not going to see all of the mathematical details behind it. You can definitely look that up or ask me about it if you're curious about sort of deeper theory behind all of this. But I'm going to try to motivate what's happening and then discuss sort of how we go about remedying this. So the uh, core piece to understand is that we want to test, uh, if we want to test the marginal variance model or any component of the marginal variance model, we're not going to be able to rely on standard asymptotic theory that we're used to. So in order to make this concrete, let's say that we're working with the random slope intercept model and the only variant of interest is time, right? So what I mean by this is that we have yij and we're gonna have an intercept term and a random intercept. We're going to have a slope term with time, so beta one tij, and we're also gonna have a random slope term, uh, so we'll call that b one i with tij, and then epsilon. Okay, so there's no other variates that we're interested in, so this is a fairly simple model, right? And what we wanna think about is sort of what variance parameters are we going to be needed to estimate here, right? And so, you know, we need to estimate the D matrix and we need to estimate GI, which is just sigma squared times by the identity. And this D matrix, well, if we use the notation from last video, we're estimating sort of two param or three parameters for this. So we have the variances and then we also have the covariances, right? So D00 being the variance of our random intercept, D01 being the covariance between those two, and D11 being the variance of uh, the random slope term, right? And then we had expressed before, we had used this notation to say that the variance uh, matrix VI, we sort of gave it this parameter theta, and we said that that's gonna be uh, ZID, ZI transpose uh, plus GI, right? And so in this case, this parameter theta here is going to contain all of the parameters that we could want to test. So that's going to be say D00, uh, D11, D01, and then sigma squared. Okay, so this is what theta is in this case, right? And so it's just capturing all of those variance parameters that we're actually estimating. Okay, and so a few things to note, these D00, D11, and sigma squared all have to be greater than zero, right? So we're constraining the space of all of those parameters to be positive. And that's because they're variances, right? We can't have negative variances at all. And so when we're sort of doing this maximum likelihood estimation, those variances that we're estimating, they can't be any real number. They have to be constrained. And if you actually take a look at some of the likelihood theory that gives us those asymptotic results that we rely on for the likelihood ratio and the uh, the wald based statistics, they actually all rely on having an unconstrained parameter space. Okay. And so in this situation where we have these constrained parameter spaces, we actually run into issues where the asymptotic distributions aren't what we would normally expect. So let's think about two different hypotheses that we might want to test. The first one is about whether there's covariance between those factors, the two random factor terms here. In terms of a hypothesis, a null hypothesis, we might be testing the null that uh, theta three equals zero, right? So that's just theta one, two, and three. 
So if we want to test theta 3 equals 0. Now, in actual terms, what we're sort of saying here is, are the two different random effects independent of one another? Right? And so that might be something that's of substantive interest to us. Right? And if we wanted to test this standardly, what we would do is we would take theta hat 3, we'd subtract off 0, right? subtract off under the null, divide by the standard error of theta hat 3. And in this case, you know, that's the square root of the variance. And we're going to say that that's approximately normally distributed as 0, 1, where this is under the null, right? So that's if h0 is true. And in this case, this test is going to work. And the reason is that theta 3 is an unconstrained parameter, right? Theta 3 can be anywhere. Uh, you're not constraining covariances. And so because of that, this test is going to work exactly as you would expect, and we can do this. And the likelihood theory gives us this test, right? So that's perfect. But now let's say that we wanted to know whether the rate of growth for individuals varied substantially, right? So is there a significant difference between individuals in their growth rate? Now, what that means is that the growth rate corresponds to the uh, beta or B1 term, rather, right? That's the slope. And so B1 if we want to test whether b1 is equal to 0, well, then that's the same thing as testing whether the variance of this term, d11, is equal to 0, right? Because if the variance is 0, then every realization of it is going to be exactly at 0. If we have any positive variance there, then uh, that's, that's going to be no longer the case, right? If we have any positive variance, then there's some amount of randomness, and so this won't be the case. But if the variance is zero, then all of our realizations are exactly zero. And so if we want to test this null hypothesis that d11 equals zero, and again, this is going to be something that we're interested in because we want to know, do individuals actually need their own slope term, right? Does the, does the slope change based on individuals? That's something that we're going to care about. And so uh, this sort of d11 in this case is going to correspond to theta two, right? So it's a test of does theta two equal zero? And if we try to do the same thing, we do theta hat 2 minus 0 divided by, say, the square root of the variance of theta hat 2. Well, we'd want to say that under the null hypothesis, this is equal to or distributed as a normal 0, 1. Unfortunately, that's not going to be the case. Okay? And the reason is that theta hat 2 or theta 2 is constrained away from 0. So this distribution is not going to work well for us. And so we actually need some other method of testing this, okay? So how are we actually going to go about doing that? Well, the nice part is that it, while it is sort of uh, theoretically more confusing and there's a lot of math that's underlying all of this, uh, from a practical perspective, it doesn't become that much harder for us. So the first thing that I want to note is that if we want to test this theta 2 equals 0 hypothesis, that's the same thing as coming up to our model here and dropping this term. Right? If we delete that term from our model, then that's the same thing as fixing this guy equals zero. Okay, And so uh, as a result, oh, and I guess the other, the other thing to note is that if, if uh, there is no variance in the uh, random slope term, then of course that also means that the covariance term can be dropped because we're dropping that as well. Right? And so um, yes, that's a, that's a slight hiccup, but we get both of those sort of for free. But regardless, uh, sorry for that little tangent there, but what I'm saying is that this model of beta 0 plus b0i plus beta 1 tij plus epsilon ij is gotten to under the null hypothesis of d11 equals 0. Okay, And so we also note that this model is nested inside of our other model, right? And so can we apply sort of a likelihood ratio procedure, right? And so the standard that we would want to do is we would say, let's say, call this uh, smaller model here. Let's call this model one, and we'll call this model up here, this full model up here, model two, right? So then we can estimate the maximum likelihood under this model, let's say, call it theta hat with a one. And then we've also estimated, say, theta hat two, where that's from the first model that we were looking at. And we can define this test statistic as negative two times the difference in the log likelihoods 
where we take our smaller model, we subtract off the log likelihood of our larger model. And under uh, the null hypothesis in sort of under standard asymptotic theory, we're going to find that this is going to be distributed as a chi-squared random variable, right? And the number of degrees of freedom is going to basically be the difference in the number of uh, parameters that we have there. It's going to be based on the number of constraints. And so in this case, it would be a chi-squared one because we're making a single constraint. Now, this result also does not hold, okay? But not all hope is lost because we actually can write down what the distribution of this test statistic is. And because of that, we can still use it to test these hypotheses. So under the null hypothesis, what we will find is that this uh, test statistic, this likelihood ratio test statistic is actually a mixture of two chi-squared distributions. So we're going to take one half from a chi-squared one, and we're going to add on one half from a chi-squared two. Okay. Now, more generally, the way that we're going to get these degrees of freedom, this first one is going to be the number of random effects in model one. And this second one is going to be the number of random effects in model two. Right? And so, you know, it depends on how many random effects you're setting equal to zero. But if you want to test these nested models, we can do it with a likelihood ratio test. We just have to update what this distribution is. Okay? So you can find tables for these mixture distributions. I also have provided some helper functions on the course website that will compute these in R for you when we're actually doing that. And we'll see that in the next video when we actually. Uh, sort of take a look at this practically. But the good news is that when we're testing these variance parameters, we cannot use Wald's results and we cannot use standard likelihood ratio test results, but we can use these modified mixture results, right? And then everything else proceeds as normal. So then we could test that hypothesis. And if we find that we can, uh, you know, we don't have enough evidence to reject this null hypothesis, then maybe that will let us drop that term from the model. Or whatever else. So everything else proceeds exactly as you would expect. The only difference is that you have to watch out what this limiting distribution is. And this is going to be the case for any of these variance parameters. Now, in fact, this is actually going to be the case quite often in likelihood ratio tests. But the thing is, normally, variance parameters aren't something that we actually care about. Normally, we're viewing variance parameters as a nuisance parameter in the model, and we don't need to test them. We can just keep them there. In this case, because the variance parameters are something that are so intricately linked to how we're going to be interpreting sort of all of the results from these random effects, um, we will be interested in numbers or a num num numerous tests that are based on these variance parameters. And so knowing that you can't just test based on the p-values of a chi-square distribution, super important, you have to use these mixture distrib distributions. Nothing else changes. Should be fairly straightforward if you're used to that. But again, all of this is written down in the notes that are posted on the course website. If you have any questions at all, please reach out and ask me. I'm always happy to answer your questions. Hopefully everything here made sense, and I will see you in the next lecture video.